Good morning and welcome to Motivation on Monday here on the Step by Step Listening business page on Facebook. I'm Cheryl Andrews, my company's called Step by Step Listening and we help you to gain clarity of what you want and the confidence to make it happen. So if you're somebody who'd really like to do more of what you love and ditch the critic that says you can't, this page is all about sharing tips, tools and strategies to help you to understand what your next best step is. Today's subject is how to make a good decision. And this is something that we cover in quite a lot of detail. When people come to me and they want clarity, they want confidence, and they want something to change, then often they have to make a decision, and they have to be able to stay confident with that decision, um, even when other people won't change or won't agree or won't concur. So when you're wanting to work in harmony with your family, your team, your clients, often it can be really challenging to truly, 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 truly understand and trust your own decision-making process. So I was asked the question today, this week in the Manager Critic, the 21 day challenge. So how do you go about modeling out your decision making process? So I'd like to share that with you today. Um, the things that I do with my clients to help them get clarity of it. And this is an ongoing thing. Um, there's many iterations. You, the first time you map it out, you'll get a certain part of the process. Then you'll go away and make decisions and you'll be able to catch yourself. And then you'll update your process. You'll under, understand how you do it. So there's two sides. So the first question I ask you, and I want you to think about that today, and I'd like to hear your comments below. When you're making a good decision, that's like what? Now, in um, when I've worked with clients over a period of time, what they discover is, you, do you know, you probably it's not until you've made the decision that you realise how much tension um, and stress and anxiety, how much a, a unmade decision was consuming your thinking, your thoughts, and perhaps even causing tension in your body. So for me, when I listen to the models and metaphors that clients come up with is when they've got a decision, um, they've made a decision, it's a good decision, they feel lighter, they feel taller, they feel more energized, they feel really focused, they have confidence of what they've got to do. So then they've got a tick list, the task, they can get on and do it and then they can tick off and they get a sense of satisfaction. And when you haven't made a decision, when you're stuck in indecision, it can feel very heavy and like your head is full and that you, you're not really sure what to focus on next. And so that's when we get the overwhelm, which is what the book's all about, from overwhelm to clarity. So it, when we've got a good decision, it feels right inside and we can articulate it well externally to other people. And I, that's my definition of a good decision. Lots of people might have a gut feeling. They'll go, you know, I have a feeling this is really good. And that feeling, based on how many times I've modeled it out with other people, is usually based on um, what works for you, your past experiences, patterns and trends that you are subconsciously aware of, if not consciously aware of, that intuitively tell you this is the right thing to do. And when it, we just have a feeling that it's the right thing to do, the challenge with those decisions is that they're right for us, but we can't necessarily communicate it effectively to other people. And so we don't always get the buy-in of other people, other, unless you have a huge amount of trust built up with them and you say to them, I just trust that this is absolutely the right thing you need to do. And they have perhaps had experience that you're really good at making decisions, so they trust you and they also go along with those decisions too. So the first question is then, when you're making good decisions, that's like what? I'd love to know what that's like for you. Um, whereabouts is that decision when you make a good decision? So just notice, is the decision outside of you? Is it inside of you? When it's a good decision, does that decision have a shape or size? So it will depend. Sometimes there's real sort of life-changing decisions or decisions that are going to have a massive impact on um, your whole family, your whole system, everything and everyone you're connected to, that decision you're going to make is going to have a massive impact. So, for example, if you decide to change jobs and you want to work in a different country, then the whole of your family have to re make, create new networks, create new connections, new um, support networks when they move country. If you just decide whether to eat an orange or an apple today, then it will be just your physical well-being in that moment that may well be impacted. And yes, if you were continually making poor choices and it made you ill, it made you um, unhealthy, it made you um, poorly, then over time that would also have just as bad a detrimental impact on people that you care about. But it may not be such a 
if it's only a one-off decision and it's only going to be in a moment so it's all about iterations it's about how many times do this, does this show up how much will this impact you and the people that you care about so the decision making when it's good decision making is like what whereabouts is it does it have a shape or size and a decision like that then what happens i'd love to hear your thoughts on that now, and that's the, the, what I would call the holistic way of looking at it. This, if you've got a metaphor for it, so when I'm, I'm, I haven't even thought about mine today, but if, if I was making a decision making and it's a good decision, um, there is a process to it. So there's a more logical side to it as well. So for me, when I'm making a good decision, I, um, so the question you can ask yourself, what's the first thing that happens? And the first thing that happens for me when I um, am consciously making a good decision is I have a sense of feeling uncomfortable. So I usually get a bit of a sort of sicky feeling in my stomach. Um, I feel like a bit anxious. Uh, my head can feel a bit full, a bit like cotton wool. And I can feel like there's loads and loads of words and options swimming around outside of me. And so I know that a decision needs to be made. That's the first thing that happens for me. And so for you, what's the first thing that happens? And if you want to write it in the comments, but the first thing that happens is this. And I would suggest you grab a post-it note, um, write down the first thing that happens, and then think about, so when that's the first thing ha that happens, then what happens? And then get another post-it note and put that next to it and put then what happens? And then be curious if anything happens in between those, because these will be our autopilot responses, intuitive um, uh, responses, our gut reaction, whatever word you wanna put for it, but there'll be some stuff going on in your subconscious mind um, that is actually impacting what happens in between and maybe nothing happens in between maybe you've just mapped out exactly this happens and this happens and this happens so you're going to continue to get post-it notes and you're going to map it out so you'll end up with a I suggest you do it sort of um, from left to right so you end up with a, a row of post-it notes so the first thing is for me I have a sense of overwhelm and that a decision needs to be made then um, I ask myself the question, what would I like to have happen? And, um, and I write down what it is I want to have happen. Then I um, think about how do I need to be? That's my process now. Um, I think about what happens to Mark, my husband, what happens to my family, my children, what happens to my business, what happens to my home and what happens to my health. And what happens to my wealth? There tend to be like the six checkers that I have now that I'll check in and go, what happens to these things? Um, then what happens is I, um, I have another check in then at that point, because usually um, around this point is when I start to feel a little bit anxious or resentful because I'm probably starting to make some decisions that I can't have what I want without upsetting somebody. And so uh, I'll get that anxious feeling again. So then I'll go, okay, so given that Mark might not like it or my clients might not like it or my collaboration partners might not like it, given that information, what would I like to have happen? And then something will change about that decision. So either that decision will stay the same, but it will now say, I really want to have that, but I'm going to need to have a conversation with um, my collaboration partners or my husband or whatever it might happen so that maybe another thing needs to happen in order to make the decision because actually what I want is to have that decision and, and for them to be okay with it so that's how I would map it out so you end up with your post-it notes all the way along the top each step of your process so the first time you've done this don't forget I've been modeling my decision making process now for seven or eight years so I'm I play around with it I update it and I'm learning how to improve my decision making all the time and so the good news about modeling it out and having a sense of um, where it is in my body, very like food, if I'm making a decision that's very head orientated, then often it's because I'm in overwhelm. And I've got so many things going on. And so I'll often make decisions like I'll ask, use words like I fancy chocolate or I fancy a glass of wine. And usually when I'm fancying something, it's because I've learned that that's a decision that is coming from a distraction. It's, it's I, I can control that. I can make a decision and do it because I can't make a decision about everything else. And so I check in with myself when it comes to food now, because generally speaking, if I'm making a good food decision, it will come from my stomach. 
it will come from a place where I'm genuinely hungry and I need something to eat. So rather than I fancy something, I need something. And then I can check in with myself what kind of thing is that thing and I can check what food it is that I'm actually needing nutritionally and then I can make a decision. So this is me, this isn't something that came out of like the first modeling exercise I ever did. I modeled my decision making probably for the first time ever in 2010, 2011. And so I do this with my clients week on week. We're modeling decision making in the Do I Get or Ditch program. Um, we do taster sessions of it in the Manager Critic 21 Day Challenge. So I'm updating my model all the time. So be kind to yourself and, and be aware that you'll develop this awareness over time if you keep revisiting it. So you've got your model going across. Now you can go down and deepen your understanding of it. So if I've got my question here for overwhelm, I might go, so overwhelm's like what? And I go, and I put some post-it notes going down below. So I've got more detail about what overwhelm's like. And then when I ask myself a question, I might say, so what kind of ask and what kind of question? And I could get some more detail about what's going down there. And I might look at what happens in between. And actually what happens in between is I stop. And I might ask myself, what kind of stop is that stop? And it, the more you unpack this, the more questions you ask yourself, the more clarity you have about how you make decisions. And if you're checking in, when that stop, whereabouts that stop? Um, so for me, um, I haven't thought about this question yet before. So it's like, for me, it's a stop. It's like a big hand going up saying stop. It's like, this can't carry on. You need to make a decision now. Now, what I've realized over the years is that I can avoid the overwhelm and that you've got to stop by starting my day every day, writing down, what would I like to have happen today? What would I like to have happen in the next seven days? What would I like to have in the next 30 days? And by continually asking myself the question, what would I like to have happen and how do I need to be and what support might I need and what impact would I have on the people that I care about? I avoid getting to that point where I'm in overwhelm. And so by me knowing my decision-making process, I can start to put um, strategies in, personal development tasks in, that enable and empower me to make better decisions every single day and every single moment. So hopefully that helps. Um, it's just a short video today. I would love to see below your pictures of your post-it notes mapped out. I'd love you to ask any questions you've got about decision-making. And if you are interested in knowing more about the Do Delegate or Ditch program, that is a program where I help you in conjunction with other groups. You can either do this one to one with me and I can ask you lots of questions and we will get right down into those juicy details of how you make a good decision. And we'll map it all out in detail. And that's a, it's an eight part program. We can do that one to one or you can do that with us in a mastermind group. And at the moment, uh, subject to numbers and people, enough people joining, we're starting out on the 9th of April, um, where you can be on a Zoom call for an hour, um, two hours, sorry, once a week. And you'll be able to not only model your own decision making process out, but you'll be able to hear how other people do it. And for me, there is huge value to do both. Um, when you work one to one with a coach like myself, you're going to get really into the detail of yours and you're going to really know your decision making process as it is right now. Um, but when I did this in a group and when Mark and I did ours, I, when I did, saw how he made decisions, it was much more logically driven. I never asked the question, what could go wrong or what if? And he had those contingency plans in his decision making process. And he had the, you know, what happens to Cheryl kind of question. And I hadn't really thought about those questions before. So listening to other people and how they make decisions meant I went, oh, that's something I could put into my process, into my system, because I don't actually ask what could go wrong. I thought that was a bit negative. Um, reading Steve Judge's book at the moment, um, one of the things he does is really good contingency planning, and he looks at what could go wrong, so he plans that in advance. And I've discovered that really helps me manage my critic, because subconsciously my brain is thinking about what could go wrong. So if I consciously talk about it, consciously plan for it, if it goes wrong, I have a plan, I have a strategy, I've already made the decision about what's going to happen if that happens. So I'm not having to make decisions in a crisis situation because I've already done the contingency planning. So that's what we do, that's the Do Delegate or Ditch program. If you'd like to know more about that, then please pop a comment or send me a message, I'd love to hear from you. Um, have an amazing week, Have make lots of good decisions, and on top of that, don't forget, every time you make a good decision, celebrate it. And perhaps map out, how did you make that decision? 
you know, what was the process that you went through? And the more you get to know how you make good decisions, the more you'll be able to um, make them quicker, faster, because when you get stuck, you'll know exactly what's missing. You'll be able to update your system much faster and quicker. And you're better communicated to other people why it matters to you. Have a great week.